Hey everybody, welcome back to Taylor Welding. My name's Chris and it is cold in here. I'm about to leave to go to a Christmas party and I don't want to fire up my heater and do all that. <clears throat> so I'm going to drink my pre-workout. looks like Kool-Aid. <laughs> I was watching a TV show one time. A guy said, what is your favorite flavor Kool-Aid? He thought a minute, he said, red. <laughs> I don't know why I thought that was funny. All right, I got a few questions today. Hit the like button if you like this kind of content. And subscribe if you want to uh, be notified. Hit the bell. So do all those things. It'll help me out. Mike. Hey, Chris, I'm a senior in high school. That's cool, man. I love hearing from you young guys. If you're young and you're watching this video, reach out to me in the comments. I'll do my best to get back to you. I'm, I'm, getting, I'm, I'm making time. Okay. And I have been watching your videos for a couple of weeks, and I have learned a lot. I recently bought a 1972 Red Face SA200 for my very first welding machine, and I have been practicing with 6010 and 7018 every day after school. You're going to crush it in life. Uh, for a couple of hours in all positions, I have been having trouble running 1 8 and 332 718 vertical. Uh, we all did at one time. Uh, my puddle keeps falling out no matter what my arc length. Adjust heat up and down, but to no avail. Could it be bad or older rods? Any help would be appreciated. Not really. If, if that 7018 isn't just obvious, it's, a, it's bad, it's probably fine. They, uh, contrary to popular belief, you can get away with a lot with a 7018. Way more than a, uh, like a cellulose rod, like 6010 or 70 plus or those kind of rods because... I don't really know why they they're, they're just tough uh, not like not like this kind of tough if you did that to a 17 it'd lose its flux but uh you can not keep them in a heater they can get a little wet and you can dry them off you know you run a torch over them beat the moisture out of them and, and weld with it so you you can heat them up a little bit knock the moisture off of them that that'll help them weld a little bit better but i'm gonna tell you something when you burn it down to about right here that rod's hot it's that simple um, <clears throat> okay, now on your welding machine, I have very, very little experience with a 1972 Red Face, uh, and the only experience I had with it is it welded like a scalded dog from top to bottom, like beating and hot passing and stuff like that. Now, for 7018, uh, I've never run a 7018 on that style machine. Those are Pipeliner's favorites. Uh, just because they weld so fast and so hot, you know, they got copper windings in them and <clears throat> they really do weld good. Uh, but as far as going uphill with a 7018, uh, the guys that had those machines loved my Vantage. It, it did really good with the 7018 to really pile up the metal. Uh, it can be done. Your machine's fine, I'm sure. Uh, you're just going to have to play with it. Uh, I would turn it down where I could go slower. If it's falling out, that means it's too hot. You know, that period. If you're all you guys, if you're running downhill, I remember when I started welding and the guy I bought my machine from was a prick and he wouldn't tell, give me any information besides join the union, join the union. It's like, so I had to figure it all out at first. I had plenty of help later on from my buddies but that I met out here, but <clears throat> uh, I was trying to run these five millimeters it was actually three sixteenths before they had five millimeters or right as they were getting popular. And they said, you had to weld with these three sixteenths. And they were, every time I'd get on the side, it would just fall out on the ground. I was putting more metal on the ground than I was on the side of the pipe. I was too hot. So that's your, your first, or your material's too hot. If you're welding on some real thin pipe or some thin material and it's too hot, let it cool off first. Go dip it in water unless you're going to x-ray it. Well, actually, it'll pass x-ray fine <laughs> unless you're going to bend it or something. Uh, but <clears throat> that's a story I ought to tell you one day. I had, I had x-ray guy pour water on every pass that I made while I was welding it. And then I got it really hot at the very end and quenched it off and see if it bothered the x-ray. It, it was fine. So... That'll pass x-ray, but it's not real good for uh, the integrity of the metal. Um, little side note. So your metal's falling out probably about right there. As you're, yeah, as you're, as you're, if you're, that's dead bottom, it's probably starting to go to crap about right there. And you, man, it's, as soon as it starts to 
droop. You'll see it. And if you push it in there, it's just going to get worse. Pull out. Let it cool off. Take your grinder. There'll be where that first drip starting to make and it's starting to eat into that pipe. That is only going to get worse. Take your, just stop. Readjust. Take your grinder and feather that back down where that big knot is. Feather it down and, and start again. Start up here. Drag your rod down and start going again. It, uh, a little bit cooler and you'll you'll do that a few times and i've had to do that i mean there's some days I'd, i had to do it now i mean every now and then it just kind of happens and it's weird it's like when it starts happening uh it's just kind of strange it's hard to figure out uh but just know it happens to all of us you're not alone it, it can be done so let me recap when it starts drooping pull out let it cool off feather that not start over and go as far as you can if it starts doing again do not try to make it worse and hold it in there and think it's going to get better uh the one more thing you can do <clears throat> you can step away from it you can try to get touch it make a loop and then get up kind of like i don't really recommend that but you can if it's starting to go to crap you can kind of boop boop and see if that'll get fill that hole up and go on but most time it's just better to back off grind it turn your machine down and go a little bit more so i hope that helps you uh, let me know if it did i got a few other questions here uh and by the way man if you're if you're welding after school every day that i'm telling you you're going to crush it in life and i'm not saying uh yeah you'll be a good welder that's fine but if you've got that kind of drive You'll be able to do anything, anything you put your mind to. I mean, just think about, it. you're going to see, okay, when I was 18, I put my mind to this, and in six months, I was making $30 an hour welding, or, or even if it takes you a year. And your other friends will be like, you're making what? You're not making that kind of money. Yeah, and we're working 712s. I used to tell them that all the time. They'd be like, no, nobody works 712s. They would get downright mad, some of them. They weren't really my friends is what what it boils down to, uh, you know, it's easy to find somebody to mourn with. It's hard to find somebody to rejoice with you. Remember that. All right. Uh, next question. Oh. oh, by the way, Merry Christmas, guys. It is Christmas Eve, and I promised you guys I would make a video. Okay, Vic. Okay, about shutdowns. Got some questions about shutdowns you got to be able to pass their test or else you will not be able to apply for six months. Uh, I've worked with several people. It used to be three months, I thought. So don't worry about it. If you fail the test, go to the next one. Ain't a big deal. Uh, how, can, uh, how can you get practice at home? Coupons, what a good welder to run routes you can plug in your garage. Okay. Uh, a good welder you can use in your garage. I, guys, I've never had a stick welder that I plugged in the wall that I liked. Uh, but I haven't had one in the last 20 years either. I mean, I got a big AC, looks like a big tombstone my dad gave me. It weighs about 450 pounds. And it's not, you know, it'll weld, but it's, it's not the same. Uh, just get online and maybe... Uh, Maybe I'll do a demo on one of them. I don't, I, a lot of Chinese companies have been reaching out to me wanting me to demo their stuff, and I just don't want to do that. Somebody did send me a welding lens. I'll put it in the next video. That it is really good. I really like it. I'll put that in the next video. Um, I don't have it with me. I'll do it now. So I don't know. Sorry. I could make something up, but to be honest with you, I just don't know a really, really good welding machine you can plug in the wall. I'm sure they're out there. The only thing I plug in is mine. Uh, Miller Matic 252 over there, and it's not stick. So I wish I had uh, more information on that. I just purchased a 400 amp stinger holder similar to the black one in this video, but cheaply, but a cheapy. Right away, the rod holding part doesn't impress me. The rod is very tight unless I mess with it over and over like the opening is too wide or the clamp piece is too smooth. Any suggestions? I have all 332 rod, by the way. Enjoy your business. Thank you. He's a TIG guy. All right, TIG guy. Bruce. Um, your stinger, man, I just never, if you're fighting it 
and it's not wanting to stay in there, especially with a small rod. That's why I got that one. Um, it just get another one. Don't every time I buy something cheap, I regret it. If I'm gonna use it, you know. And if you're not welding all the time, a, a good stinger lasts you a long, long time. Oh, this is a good one. Is your drive time a write off? This is from Clifford. Uh, no, you get paid for it because it's drive time, but uh, your mileage is the write off. Uh, since I've been doing it, uh, that was the best way to approach that. Uh, a lot of people try to write off fuel, but it's really hard to do that. Uh, you can write off miles. Uh, talk to your tax guy. I'm not a CPA or anything like that. But that's what I did um, through my careers. I always wrote mileage off. And a lot of times the gas company, would, uh, the, the subcontractor I was working through would supply a fuel card, and I would still write off the miles. So that was a really, really cool thing. Not sure if that was what I was supposed to be doing, but... <laughs> I did. And that's it, guys. Uh, like I said, have a merry, merry Christmas and an awesome day. I'll see you in the next one. If you have any questions, put it in the comments. I'll do my best to help, help you out. Later.